All right, welcome fellow entrepreneur. If you're running your website, maybe your Shopify website like I do, and you receive a notice that says your website needs improvement from Google when applying your website onto the Google sales channel, could be a lot of things going on here, and this is not a great thing to see, but I've been running Shopify stores for a while now, and I currently run a few Shopify stores, and I remember back in the day, I got a few of these, and usually it's not that big a deal, and so I'm gonna walk through this guide here to talk to you about some of the best practices that they suggest, what happened in my case, and how we can get around this quick little issue so we can get you back to working on your business. So in my experience specifically, like I said, I run Shopify stores, but I've been running Shopify stores for a while now. So what happens with Shopify is that if you're using your Shopify website and you're trying to sell your Shopify products on different sales channels, one of them is Google, and putting your products on a different sales channel outside of Shopify onto Google is a whole separate sales channel and has a whole separate terms of service and it has a whole set of best practices and things you need to do because remember Google isn't the internet Google is just one business and one product it is the leading search engine over 90% of internet searches start with Google as compared to things like Bing and other services so Google is its own product and the websites that they promote and the products that they promote on their product have to be really good because you're putting your website onto their product so they don't want to put your website if it's incomplete or if it has issues and promote a store that might have have different issues over a store that is uh, much better. So this is all about understanding the best practices on Google and understanding how to be better than your competition, how to rank higher and all these sorts. So if you got this email from Google, and it seemed kind of vague. I know how you feel. Um, so this is just a few things that I learned in my experience. For my one of my first stores way back in the day, you see some just some suggestions here that says remove any placeholder images, templated text, broken links, and these sort of things. We see a lot more information down here at the bottom, which we'll get to in a second. In my specific case, my website needed improvement because the policies were not viewable on every page. Essentially, you know, policies like refund policy, terms of services, privacy policy, these things that Shopify helps you make. I made a whole video on that. Uh, you can check out my channel for that. But in my case, you know, creating legal policies and all that is not fun whatsoever. It's very intimidating and it's very scary for your first businesses, but they are needed. It says on the Google's uh, terms of service, actually, that you need to have policies publicly available and clickable. And in some cases, it seemed like in my case that they, these had to be viewable on every page. So by adding them to the, to the footer and having them publicly available so that they can be clicked on every single page was a big factor in my case that my website needed improvement. And then also, of course, on the Shopify page, you have them enabled at your checkout right here at the bottom. A lot of these uh, suggestions here about the website being complete or have placeholder text or images or important information or poor product descriptions, uh, broken links for poor browsing experience or irrelevant product descriptions, these sort of things. This is kind of all about making your website the best it possibly can be and not deceiving your customer and not having the customer have a bad experience experience on your website. Remember, your website is trying to be placed onto Google's product and they only want to promote the best of the best. And if you have a website that's incomplete or has a poor viewing experience or is full of broken links creating 404 errors, Google doesn't want to promote that and they'll send you this notice. So a few other potential fixes, may again, make sure you have your privacy policies, your terms of service, your usage policies, all these things in uh, your website. Usually best practices, they're found at the bottom. They can be stacked up like this at the bottom. And then, you know, you can put all your links in the bottom of your website in a footer. That's kind of what the footer is used for. And then if it's in your footer, you can put this on this template on any page of your website. And then even on the checkout that isn't very customizable on the Shopify platform, you can have your, your uh, policies shown at your checkout like so. Some other very common fixes for a website that may need improvement uh, that you can action are the following. Review your domain to ensure it's accurate. And we have some suggestions here for from top level domains. More importantly, it says, make sure there are no broken links on your website, like invalid URLs, 404 errors, or the destination has moved or no longer exists. In this case, if you have a 404 error, that means the page no longer exists. So maybe you created some content one page and then you deleted that page or you changed your domain name. And if somebody searches your old domain name, they can get a 404 error. Uh, but if they search your new domain name, they'll be brought to the page. If your sitemap that you submit to Google still isn't updated and still shows the old domain, you you can get 404 errors. You can change this in a few ways. You can just resubmit your sitemap to Google every once in a while, especially if you make a domain change, because that'll affect all the destinations of your website. But sometimes easier if it's just a single page or a couple of pages, you can just make a few URL redirects. And there's a bunch of Shopify guides on that um, because that's exactly what that's for. If you have a page that is showing a 404 error, you'll make a URL redirect to say, if somebody tries to go to this page here, www.mystore, whatever, um, redirect them to this one, this new page. And 
that will solve the, the 404 errors um, on your website. Um, this is really important too, because um, if you have a super large website with a massive catalog, it can be very difficult to manually go through all your pages and look for broken links, um, especially if you make major website changes, or like I said, you change your domain name or you make a subdomain. This can create a broken links. So managing the size of your website and the size of your pages is key so that you're not unaware of a bunch of broken pages, 404 errors or destinations that no longer exist. Moving down here, it says, make sure there are no placeholder images or text on your website. So what is a placeholder image? A placeholder image is a section on your website that just has the default template and you haven't edited. So when you're on your Shopify store, Shopify store is made up of blocks and sections and templates. And so for example, if you make a block that is an image on your website here with text on this side and you don't change the text and you don't change the image, sometimes it will put what is called a placeholder image or placeholder text on your website. Sometimes placeholder text can look like this where it's called, it's not called, but it, it's kind of pronounced lorem ipsum. This doesn't mean anything, but it's just commonly found as placeholder text, especially on Adobe products like Photoshop or editor or illustrator. And essentially it's where you make a text block and to show you what the text will look like, maybe the color of the font or the style of the font, it will just input placeholder text into the text box. And then when you type in the actual text that you want, the placeholder text, the lorem ipsum text goes away. But say you have a massive website and you have some areas that have placeholder texts in it here and placeholder images here. Google doesn't like that. Google doesn't like that at all. So it's all about managing your website, optimizing each page before you create a new one, optimizing each product, making sure you have a, a reasonable and manageable catalog of products. It's not a great best practice to have a Shopify website that has thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pages that doesn't easily allow the customer to navigate the website, find what they want. And you don't really want a website that has thousands and thousands of products of pages that are not optimized and not found and not searched and not purchased. You would really want to create a few products, sell those products, expand, understand why those products are being sold, scale those products before adding more. And this is how some of the best Shopify store, small businesses run their company. You don't want to compete with Amazon. You don't want to compete with AliExpress. You don't want to compete with Walmart or, or these things where you seem to sell everything under the on the sun. The customers are just going to go to Amazon. They're going to go to Walmart to do that. So you really have to niche down, optimize your product page, make sure there's no placeholder images or placeholder text on the website. And when you have a manageable catalog of optimized products and optimized pages, your website can look so much better. And Google will like that a lot more as well. This is also really important. It says make sure the product details on your website match the product listings. Example, the content in the about section doesn't match the product data being displayed. So this means not copying. Again, this kind of talks about product optimization, page optimization, and optimizing one page fully before you're creating a new one instead of just importing endless amounts of products from AliExpress or anything like that, just endlessly, 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 because these things catch your eye. That's not how it's going to work. And Google isn't going to like that. And you're not going to be very successful doing that in my experience. So making sure, you know, if you have an about us section, it is optimized, it is content is correctly written. And if you have a product uh, page, the product description and the meta fields and uh, all the information in that content is content and product specific. Because if you think about it on Google, if they're promoting your product in an ad, for example, and somebody clicks on to your product and they, they are, they show, they get shown that product specific information. So if you have endless amount of products that is not optimized and you have perhaps some meta fields or some metadata that is populating the same information incorrectly on multiple product pages, and customer clicks on this specific page and sees incorrect product data, incorrect product description. Google's not going to like that. Customer's not going to like that, right? Google is just trying to give customers who are searching on their website the best and easiest shopping experience. And so if they, if you want them to promote your business, you know, your competitors are definitely doing this. So you're going to have to do this, if not better than them. And then this is uh, the problem I ran into myself way back in the day. So it says, make sure the product description categories on your website match those in your product data. For example, the customer information and the refund or return pages are inconsistent with your product listings. So again, it's just kind of talking about inconsistencies in the websites and deceiving the customer uh, within un untrue information. This this can also create a lot of um, issues with chargebacks and, and negative ratings. And, and so you want to be as transparent as possible. If there's a problem, you want to show it on your FAQ, you want it in your refund, you want it in your shipping policies, you want it in your return policies, you want to answer every question that the customer can possibly have before they click buy, because you definitely don't want to have the mindset of, uh, 
uh, if there's an issue with the product or the refund policy is not super accurate. As long as I get the sale, everything is fine. No, after the sale is just as important, if not more important than the sale, because then the customer can open a chargeback against your business with Shopify or Google doesn't like. Then they can write a negative review, which will impact your brand for a lifetime. So like I said with mine, you know, I know it's not fun at all. And it's very intimidating creating legal policies. Shopify does help you make some of these templates as well. But having correct refund, return pages, policies on your store that are accessible and not hidden and very easy to find was a problem I ran into way back in the day. So if you're not doing that, make sure that's checked off the list. And then right at the bottom here, it says other best practices in to include is provide clear and accurate business information on your store's website. This can mean your store's location or your store's business address is accurate and you're not just choosing some random location <laughs> that isn't associated with your business at all. That's not going to work. And then this is an interesting one right here. Receive good reviews. So obviously in e-commerce, social, social proof is super important to grow and scale your business. However, if you're a new business, you probably won't have any reviews at all. And so that does take time. That takes a lot of effort to build relationships with customers, not only to get sales, but then to uh, communicate with them after the fact, uh, understanding problems with the products, how they like their products, asking them for reviews, asking them for pictures, asking them for videos that you can use in your website. This all takes time. And I know if you're just starting a website, you're not going to have these reviews. And there's a lot of great Shopify apps that can help you do that. But if you put fake reviews on your website, uh, Google isn't going to like this at all. So there are obviously ways that you can import reviews from if you're drop shipping or from AliExpress or anything like that, or you can even create very easily just write a fake review, right? It's like, I have no reviews. I'll just write something myself and I'll call it myself a different name. And there we go. No, there's a lot of ways that you can verify reviews and a lot of apps that you use on your Shopify store, like judge me and these things have a section for verified reviews. And that can be clicked on and brought to the judge me business. And then judge me uh, verifies these is one app. Uh, judge me is one app that does reviews and there's a way that they can review. They can verify these reviews and that's becoming more and more common in, in e-commerce. And you'll see that all the time. You see that on the shop app as well in Shopify nowadays. But then in the end, once you go through the email that Google has sent you and you go through some of these best practices, um, you can then request a, a re-review, uh, request a review. This can take a while. You know, Google doesn't ever say timelines on how the, long these reviews can take, but it's all about just making your website as good as possible. If there's anything, you know, deceitful or um, incomplete or that can cause confusion for Google or confusion for your customers or isn't streamlined, you can best be sure that the companies that you're competing against in the same marketplace for the same products are doing these things. So in order to get a leg up on the competition, you're going to have to at minimum do these things so that you can be ranked on Google, you can run Google ads, and you can present yourself as a better alternative as customers are comparing brands and products to shop from. That's all I have in this video. I think it covers a lot of information that can affect a lot of uh, merchants. But of course, if you have any questions or you want to learn more about my experience or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. And of course, if you want to join a free community of fellow Shopify entrepreneurs, where we can all grow and learn from each other's businesses together as we achieve the ultimate business dream, consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.